because of our guest co-host yes. today is as real as they come. Yep. Say what's up to Remy Ma, y'all. Remy Ma! <laughs> You guys are so amazing. That's why I'm excited. Like, you ready for some girl chat, girl? You thought I only wanted some girl chat. <laughs> you ready for it. <laughs> well, I can't wait to start this girl chat because, Remy, there's some exciting, exciting news that just broke yesterday. Yes. You have been nominated for two 2017 really? yes. BET Awards. <laughs> wait, did you just find out right now? I really didn't know that. Like, best yes, girl. Yeah. Yeah. Which ones? Which ones? Which ones? You have been nominated for Best Female Hip Hop Artist as well as Best Group for your collaboration with Fat oh Joe. How do you feel? Congratulations. You feel? Like, I don't know. I swear, I really don't know. I really don't. I, they were probably like waiting to tell me later or something. Uh -huh. And you guys just like, well, I'm happy that you guys told me. It's just more like, but um, it's, it's great. How do you feel? I feel good. I mean, we worked really hard. I've been working really hard. Fat Joe has been working really hard. The album, Blata Plomo, if you didn't get it, you could get it out. The album is so amazing. Good. We're yes. on, like, our fourth single. Um, wow. <laughs> She's it's like, awesome. wait, I yeah, did not know really this. Like, wow. That is a real reaction yeah. right there. I didn't even know it was, they came so fast. I yeah, feel like I just was at them, like, last well, year. congratulations. <laughs> congratulations. Thank thank you. You. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> First of all, like most of all, I'm always happy just to be nominated. I don't really never care about winning. Like just to know that you put in yep. the work and someone acknowledges it yep. and yep. you're nominated with, you know, other people who've been working really hard. Uh, I'm happy with that. So dope. Well, it's awesome. gonna be Very cool. the bomb because there's a lot of great nominations, a lot of great performances. We can't wait to catch it on BET. Yes. So you know, good for you. Congratulations again, girl. Now, Remy. Over the weekend, you also celebrated your nine-year yes. wedding yes. anniversary with your husband. Oh, that's awesome. And to celebrate all the happy times, you know, you, of course, went to the happiest place on earth. Yes. Disneyland. Oh, oh look at that. It's so cute. Wait, are you, are you, are you one of those Disneyland, like, freaks? You really, really love it? Um, I love Disneyland, but you you guys know I'm impartial to Harry Potter, so I can't yeah. get okay. too, too crazy. Right. Mm -hmm. But I did make sure that I had the cutest ears ever. And of course. So it was so crazy because I was walking through the park and I was seeing other people with my ears. I was like... Mine looks so much better. <laughs> you know, even though I know in my mind they're the exact same thing, but mine were just looking so much better that day. And then they gave us like these little pins uh -huh. um, oh. that says like, you know, happily ever after. They're like, you know, are you celebrating? Oh. I was like, yeah, it's our anniversary. And they gave us these happy ever after pins. Oh. And I guess people who go to the park all the time, though, because then after we put on the pin, people were like, happy anniversary. Even though it doesn't say anything about an anniversary. They know. But yeah, they, they know. know. Yeah. So cool. Well, Sorry, you know, like, you and Pap have been through a lot over the years, and he has really stood by your yes. side. As a matter of fact, I had to commend him because I saw the Instagram um, post that he put up. Oh, um, and I really wanted to commend Pap for that because whenever there's some mess, Pap straightens it right out. Oh, yeah, so, you know. Yeah. Um, he protects your marriage. He doesn't yeah. play. What does that mean to you, I him? Mean, it, it means so much to have somebody that you know is always 150% on your exactly. side, regardless of what the situation is. Even though, you know, even if he disagrees with it, he won't tell it in front of people. He'll yes. wait till we get home and he'll be like, babe, Smart. I kind of wasn't on your side with that, but you know I'm not going to let anybody else know that I'm on your <laughs> side. But, you know... A lot of times people think when he does things, it's because I tell him to. I actually be like, babe, you're going to post me again? Like, seriously? He'd be like, so what? You're my wife, and I love you, and that's it. And I'm posting oh, you again. I love it. Or, like, if somebody says something, and they're, they're like, oh, Remy probably made him do that. I'd be the one to back, like, babe, I don't care. He's like, nope. But you know how social media is. I don't want anybody thinking for yeah. any mm -hmm. amount of moments that we're not 100% steadfast, and nothing's going to break this. Let so, it be known. You know, it's crazy after being together for married nine years. First of all, it does not seem like we were married that long. Mm -hmm. right. That's because, so cool. Because, well, one, we just, a lot of the time I was away. So we just, we've only been living together for like a little over two years. Okay. And prior to that, we were together for like, I'll say like two and a half years, three years before we got married. So we've actually been together in total 12 years. So when people was like, nine years, next year, make 10 years, what are you going to do? And, you know, my inner Remy Martha was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> what is yeah, that plan going to be? So, I came to the decision that this sounds like I should do another, you know, wedding type thing. Yes. Oh. Why not? It's 10 years. We knew the vows after 10 years. Yeah. 
No, I get to get another big crazy dress, get to spend <laughs> some money. Calling our vendors, Remy Martha's <laughs> back at work, wedding planning back on it. But wow. I asked him about it. I was like, babe, what do you think? Like, we have like another shindig, like wedding type 10 year anniversary. He's like, I think it'd be amazing. That'd be cute. I, I just that. hope he keeps that same energy when I start bringing him the bills. Like, oh yeah, this is <laughs> <laughs> Keep that same energy that you had on our anniversary last year. I love oh. it. Well, well congratulations. Speaking of conveying Thank love, you. this past Sunday was also Mother's Day. And NFL quarterback Russell Wilson decided to pay tribute to his wife, Sierra, by posting this beautiful picture on Instagram. Check it out. Now, Russell wrote in the caption, nothing better than spending time with you. You are an amazing mom, and I'm so grateful I get to spend the rest of my life with you and raising our kids. I love you. Hashtag happy Mother's Day weekend, my love. That's so beautiful. Yeah, yes. right? That's I love nice. that. However, somebody found oh, something. You wrong. know, somebody always has to find something negative to say. Not everyone thought it was so sweet. A lot of people on social media, mainly fans of Sierra's ex future, uh, took exception to Russell using the phrase "our kids." Uh, insinuating that he's, you know, being a father to future son, future junior. Now, many, on the other hand, defended Russell, saying that they respect a man who doesn't differentiate between his biological child and his stepchild. Yes. Yeah. So, ladies, I have to ask what you think. You, your moms? Well, yes. I mean, I've obviously I've never experienced having a stepmom or stepchildren, mm -hmm. but why can't we just focus on the positive, the fact that this man, you know, is, is standing up and taking in this child and seeing him as his yeah. own. I right. think that's a beautiful thing. Right. I don't see anything negative. I think him being a father figure to future junior doesn't mean that his father isn't also a great father yeah, exactly. to him. It's just, wh why not add more love? Like, yeah, wh what's bad about that? I have an incredible stepdad and I have an incredible stepmom. And my parents don't get jealous because I come first. It's about the child. It's not about ego or pride mm -hmm. or being like, well, I'm their only mother. I'm they're excited to see, hey, the more people love on my child, the more people uh, uh, put love into my child, the better. Yeah. Absolutely. I think, hey, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, well, I think that they're married. So mm -hmm. that is his child. Yeah. yeah. Technically. Like, and it was like he said, my, now if he had he wrote, you know, for our child and your son from your other previous relationship. Oh, yeah. That would, like, people would be think, like, he's crazy. And I'm pretty sure that he probably typed it, erased it, wrote it again. Yeah. yeah. Because to make sure. Just to make sure that no one had anything negative to say. He said it was our children. He, he didn't even have to mean separately. They both have children, her child, his child our children. Yeah. And I know because I wrote captions before and I'm sitting there I'm like, all right, I don't want the mom to be offended so let me change that. Yeah. All right, I don't want the kid to be offended. Wait, I don't want my husband to be offended. Wait, but now it's not saying what I really want to say. So you kind of, it goes back into that, that step parenting thing. Mm -hmm. It's a very gray area. So when you have somebody that doesn't single your child out and treat their kids differently, you have to embrace that and you yeah. have to respect it because it's just weird to like, you know, my step child. Like, yeah. yeah. Social media bullies are terrible, but so is bullying in general, especially when it's still happening in our schools every single day. As a mom with a young son, I can't even imagine having to endure this. But in a story that's gained nationwide attention, eight-year-old Gabriel Tay from Cincinnati, Ohio, committed suicide two days after what some people are describing as vicious bullying by his fellow students in a school bathroom. The graphic security footage has been released and appears to show other students kicking and striking Gabriel while he lay for five minutes on the floor unconscious. Due to its disturbing nature, we have made the decision to not play the video. This incident has triggered a police investigation. The lawyers for Gabriel's mother alleged that School officials did not tell Gabriel's mother about the assault or that he had lost consciousness, wow. reportedly only telling her he had fainted. So ladies, I for one am sick and tired of hearing about incidents like that. They need to stop. What do you guys think that could be done so all this nonsense just stops? Well... There's definitely a problem because something happened. There was an assault. It wasn't mm -hmm. just bullying. Mm -hmm. I think we need to, we really need to differentiate yes. what's bullying and what's an assault. And mm -hmm. for kids to gang up and kick, that was an assault. But then there was also something that happened because he, he went to the hospital. Then he went back to school. 
When he went back to school that day, when he went home, that's when he committed suicide. Yeah. So something happened. And I think that the school should be responsible because they know what actually this guy, this little boy was being bullied. Yeah. There should have been some type of counseling, some type of yeah. meeting, something to talk to those kids. Or a simple phone call to the kid's mother that actually explains what really happened. Yeah. You shouldn't wait to something bad happens and then you see video be released to say, oh, 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 yeah, um, uh, he, he fainted. Like, right. What, what is he that? They were trying to cover up their own tracks. Exactly. Yeah, they were trying to cover up. And he didn't even tell his mother, uh, allegedly from the story that I read, he didn't tell his mother that he had got yes. assaulted. I know. He said but if that the it was school, a stomachache. As a mom, if the school would have called me and told me what really happened, then I would literally sit down and talk to my child and say, you know, what, what is going on? And, and just maybe this could have been prevented or, you know, avoided. Yeah. So, yeah. or... If I can just add another thing, um, as, as a person who really went through bullying between eighth grade and high school, I was bullied in my middle school, so much so that the girl who bullied me was two years older than me, and the only thing that I could do in order to not have her come to my house or to threaten me further is I left the school district. So that is why I'm a graduate of Milpitas High, which is a 30-minute drive away. And what I told my parents at the time was that I just didn't like the school. I, I said, the school is bad. And of course, my parents, you know, they want me to have a better education, so they took me to Mil Milpitas. But my secret is that I really was badly bullied to the point that she just antagonized me all the time. And I'm painting this because when I think about young Gabriel, or I think about anybody out there who's been bullied, mm -hmm. you really feel trapped. You don't know what to say because if you tell somebody, it's going to continue. It's going to come back to you. Mm -hmm. There's you, Unless you remove that person from the school or move from your house or hide where you go to the store, it's yeah. always going to come at you in some way. So one thing I really thought about and prayed about this situation, I applaud the school, first of all, and any schools who have video cameras. But if you have them, check them daily. There should be somebody who's just monitoring all the action that's yes. going on because there is no reason why that video camera, thank God to the homicide detective that actually stepped into the situation to check the, yeah. the situation, to say, wait a minute, why is an eight-year-old kid aware of how to take a necktie and put it around his neck? There's something deeper in here. So a homicide detective stepped in and then checked the videotape. So that videotape was found way weeks later and after the death of this young boy. There should be somebody monitoring those tapes daily because there's so much things going on on a schoolyard that we are not aware of. Yeah, mm -hmm. that is true. You know what I mean? So, and so, this, is uh, the, this is definitely a tragedy, you know, an eight-year-old child. Somebody has lost their son. Yeah. Like, I could not even oh fathom gosh. this being, you know, my son. But I think a lot of times as parents, we have to realize that the school doesn't see or know everything. They're not omnipresent. The same way as parents, yep. when our kids leave us, we don't know every single right. thing that they're doing, mm -hmm. every single situation that happens with them. So you have teachers who are a lot of time are underpaid, they're overworked, they have a classroom full of children. Yeah. They can't see everything that's happening in the lunchroom, in the bathroom, in recess. I'm pretty sure in your case, there were teachers that didn't know what was going on with you. They just, you know, they're there they're for a job. Some people, like, unfortunately, I had a few teachers that felt like that. This is just a job. And then I had some teachers that really cared about me. Yeah. They was mm -hmm. on it. Mm -hmm. So I think it starts at home. It's true. Where we have to teach our children that it's not okay to go out here and just treat someone a certain way because they're different. Yeah. Or because, yeah. you know, and also, not only teach them how to behave with other children, teach them how to behave or how to react if that happens to them. Like, you can come talk to me. A lot of times, there's this barrier and this wall where you and your children live in two different worlds. You're working, you're doing this, yep. you're doing that. And they're living in a whole different world. And they feel like they can't come to us. They feel like they can't talk to us because they won't understand yep. or because it's going to get worse. Because, like, I know with my son, he would probably think, like, I'm not going to tell my mom because she's going to overreact. Yes. She's going to go to the mm -hmm. school. Right. And they don't want that because now it's like they're a snitch or they're yep. telling. So, you know, we have to have that communication with our our children on every level, level to prevent yeah. things. Like that is true. And we just want to say that our thoughts and prayers are with Gabriel's friends and family.